Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB. Today in the arena, I'm not recording at night anymore after like an eight hour stream. Could be fun. So we are, of course, going to record with the newly crowned world champions deck list. Yuta Takahashi destroyed the standard world championship field going 10 and 0, losing not a single match of standard, which is funny because the tournament had three rounds of draft and then set and then it had seven rounds of standard and then it had the matches the next day in the playoff of the top four. Yuta lost all three matches of draft. Oh, three. Zero limited wins and then just won the rest in standard. That's how I would aspire to win the world championship. I wouldn't even test draft. What's the point? Draft is for 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 I, I won't say it. I won't finish the thought. There's probably something funny there, but I lost it. <laughs> Draft is for losers. And Yuta is winner. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> the deck is... Is it Dragons? And it's notable because it basically goes back to the version of Is It that we had before. Cutting the galvanic iteration cutting cards that we saw for the last week like unexpected windfall uh, no battle of frost and fire or burn down the house this isn't a take all the turns combo deck it's a take one or two extra turns gold span dragon control deck and it did add one card from the new set uh that is very key Actually, it added a few, but the one that is very key is Smoldering Egg. So Smoldering Egg got added to the list. We're going to go over the piles in the deck list in just a second, but as we prepare to do that and as we break it down, I just want to remind you that if you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing and liking the video. It does help quite a bit, and I'd like to thank everybody who came out to the World's Watch Party. Easily the most viewed watch party I've ever thrown. It was the top English speaking watch party on twitch which means a lot to me and in general everybody who's dropped that twitch prime sub for the last couple days since i did the finances video seems to have really sparked a lot of that thank you uh i was definitely at a point where it felt like the twitch stream was getting viewership but not fi financial momentum and i always wondered if it was worth it if i should just be doing more youtube but you guys uh, again you show up and you do enjoy the twitch streams you have made that clear i appreciate you thank you for all the support so big thank you to the fans all right now we're going to talk about yuta takahashi's dragon deck and I've divided it into some categories. We've got the removals, we've got the counters, we've got the card draw. We've got the dragons. We've got the All Runs Epiphany category for All Runs Epiphany. And we have the lands that are not lands with the other lands. And we have a sideboard because it's actually a best of three deck. I'll be playing best of one ranked today because that's what I like. But I will keep the sideboard intact for those of you who want it. Anyway... Uh, Fading Hope is a card that was all over the tournament and has shown up again and again to be a very resilient card. Don't sleep on this card. It's pretty darn good. There are four Dragon's Fire, which, along with Thundering Rebuke, these are a lot of removal spells that can deal four damage to a target instead of three. And that made a big difference throughout the tournament, killing Goldspan Dragons, killing Old Growth Trolls, killing Asika's Chariot, killing this, killing that. So, yeah, uh, give it up for four damage spells. It seems so significantly better than three. There is a Prismari Command, which is also good against the Chariot, can also ramp you to a Dragon. There is, in the Counterspell category, one Negate, two Divide by Zero, one Dissipate, one Saw It Coming. One Dissipate, yeah, if you hit a Memory Deluge or another Flashback card with Dissipate, it's gone forever. And I think that that's a lot of the appeal of the card here. There are a lot of t places where Dissipate is better than Saw It Coming, so having a split is good. Plus, if you get Test of Talented, you only lose one, not both. So that's nice. But two divide by zeros tells you about this card. This, is, this card has been very important in the format. It just absolutely can... Um, Solve all manner of problems. There aren't many cards that are good against Asika's Chariot and All Runs Epiphany, but Divide by Zero is one of them. Oh, also in the board, we have the Environmental Sciences and Mascot Exhibition as the only two hits for the lessons, which is kind of a narrow learn board, and especially in Best of One, you should replace all these before you play it. We'll see who watched the intro, won't we? But I'm just going to keep it as is again because I want you guys to be able to copy the deck list and play it in best of three if that's what you like to do. 
All right, next up, the card advantage category. Four copies of the new card draw spell, Memory Deluge. And I love this card so much. And it was kind of blowing my mind that a lot of the dragons list I saw were running one or two of these, or none, uh, and sticking to cards like Behold the Multiverse. This card is so good, and the dragon helps you make enough mana to flash it back more consistently than other builds. Um, so really excited to see four copies here, happy to play it. Four copies of Expressive Iteration, the four Smoldering Eggs, which is the new dragon on the scene. Now it's eight dragons, and they're very efficient. There's no need to play Galzeth Prismari, Imrith, the Desert Doom, or the uh, Inferno one that's six mana. I can usually remember the names of all these cards, but I'm coming up short on that specific one. But I know Inferno's in there. Anyway, no need for those other dragons. Ashmouth Dragon is the truth, as I've heard it said a few times now. And this card is really, really good. You play your 04 Defender, you block where you need to, you stay alive, and you don't have to play it super early. If you have the choice between doing something controlly or playing your dragon, doing the controlly thing is often the right call because you can play the egg later. It only takes one big spell to flip it, like an All Runs Epiphany or a Memory Deluge. So uh, don't think that you absolutely have to play this on turn two if you have it if it's your only play it's a great one if there you don't have to play it uh if you want to play control or hold up jawari disruption instead you probably should gold span dragon of course is your rock star flippity flap the gold span is back so only two decks in the field ran four copies of gold span dragon in the main those two decks made the finals. I found again and again playing the decks from the World Championships that they would go up against decks on ladder that had four Goldspan Dragons and struggle with this beast. So I think that the Goldspan Dragon is still, and all, probably always was, one of the better cards that you can come up against. And the, the Beastie proved it at the World Champs, taking down the best players in the world who thought they had new technology that invalidated the dragon. Goldspan said, not today. All Runs Epiphany, three copies. Why three? You don't want to draw that many. You just need one extra turn to win. And if you only need one of something and you don't want it clogging up your hands too often, three is a good number. It's going to blow some people's minds, but it's true. All Runs Epiphany, as one of the most powerful things you can do in the format, doesn't need to go into every blue deck, and it doesn't need four copies in every blue deck. I'm not so sure about the, I can say the same about the dragon. I still think the dragon goes in most decks that have red, and you need a good reason not to. Even the uh, Is It Turns decks that cut it from the main deck had it in the sideboard. We saw Andre Strasky win a lot of games with Goldspan Dragon on Saturday. So uh, we've got a Spike Field Hazard, three Jwari Disruption, and four Shatter Skull Smashing. So a lot of spell lands, bringing the total land count up to 28 potential lands. And we saw this again and again at Worlds, people playing very high land counts because they can run spells in some of those slots. Two Hall of Storm Giants, three Snarls, four Pathways, and 11 Basics, seven Islands, and four Mountains. The sideboard gives you the Malevolent Hermits that you love, extra Fading Hopes, Burning Hands for the green deck, Cinderclasm for the white decks, Prismari Command, Test of Talents. I can't stress enough that these decks are built for a small field and a specific purpose. The... There are only 16 players that come to Worlds, and a little research can tell you what kind of decks they like to play. This deck has no sweepers, and it pays no respect in the main deck to Mono White. And we're going to go out there and play it on Ladder, where Mono White is the most popular thing. I think if I were going to play this on Ladder, I would find a way to run more Cinderclasms. But that's just my first impression. Before we make those judgments, we're going to dive in, and we're going to let the nonsense begin. Opponent goes first again. Um, we do have a blue source in the Jwari. Spikefield Hazard might help us if they're mono white, just slam one drops. Let's give it a try. Interesting decision. If we play this tapped, but our opponent's white two drops are all like one toughness creatures, you know? Intrepid Adversary, Luminar Gas Pirate. So let's see if we can catch it with a Spike Field Hazard. Yep. If we had played the tap land there, our opponent would have got this out of the Spike Field Hazard range. Go ahead and play the egg. Hmm. 
If we find a land, this could be an untapped land. This can't. Scary. It's a scary situation. But this is why, for best of one, I'm almost certain that the end of the video is going to mean, be me saying, add Cinderclasm. Almost positive. Sparring Regimen. Okay. This game is also a good example why you don't need a lot of epiphanies in your deck. It's hard to get up to cast them and you really only want one. Drawing two and now seeing a third here has been really bad for us. Are we going to get to six mana? I guess with two eggs it's more likely. Man, our only removal spell so far has been the hazard. The opponent's been able to do pretty much whatever they want. That is a way to lose games to Mono White. Okay. Interesting. They gave me a good block there. And they gave up a point of damage. Still no good removal. All right, hopefully we can survive the turn. Six. Must be nice. Must be nice. All right, one card can try to get us back into this. That's not bad. That's not bad. Think. All right, so we Shatter Skull Smashing on the Skyclave Apparition and the Clarion Spirit, but that doesn't leave up mana for a Divide by Zero. Which I kind of want to go mascot exhibition. I could also play gold span, attack with it, shatter the skyclave apparition. It's a tough choice. It's really tough. If the opponent blocks here, the Shatter Skull Smashing won't kill the Skyclave Apparition, and we'll have to use it on a 1-1. They might be afraid to block. If they chump block, that's really good for us. We could also let the opponent make an all-in attack, then divide by zero the Skyclave Apparition in combat, make a 2-2. It won't have a good target on the way back down, and we go get Mascot Exhibition. The opponent ends up attacking with everything, which means we have to chump block everything almost. Remember, they're going to have some plus one, plus one counters too. Yeah, let's try.
try to tempt them into going for it. Two to the bottom. Off the top. Everything attacks. Better? Yes. Because they're about to get a free 1 1 from the spirit. Does not play the apparition. Wow. Let's start with this. Find me the answers. Come on, baby. Opponent takes it. Hmm. <laughs> It's so close, right? So I think this is the best option. It kills absolutely everything. And white can't do the job without haste. And that's the important thing to always remember when you play against white. If you have a chance to keep the board absolutely clean, they probably can't kill you. If they had played the Apparition last turn, this wouldn't have been an option. Looks like they had another op Apparition, too. But the tokens are getting around it. Okay, so we'll have enough mana with Dragon to play Exhibition. Let's go for this Deluge. See if we can find another Shatter Skull smashing. Because again, keeping everything dead is the better, always the better option. Kill him. Oh yeah, this one's over. Shatter Skull Smashing did the did work in this game. Absolute work. Now you see why there's four of those. What a bailout that card was, in a way a mounting could never be. All right, we go first with no removal. I guess we're leaning on Juari to do the job. Screw you, Mono White. Screw you. I hate you. I want nothing to do with you. I just want to exterminate you. That's my only purpose. Don't even act friendly with me. You're no friend of mine. All right. Do we keep do we keep the mana sources? Divide by 0 is not great against mono white.
Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they have it? Gosh, the Cinderclasms, man. Four of them. It's, it's, lock it up. You have to play them. This just cannot stand. This level of absolute just, ah, I made creatures, yay! It's, it's gotta go. It has to end. <laughs> like, trash. Absolute trash. <laughs> One cinderclasm. Your whole board, gone. But they don't play around it. They don't care. Oh my god. <laughs> All hand. Um, man, do I keep untapped lands? I'm gonna keep the hall. There, there's gotta be a spot where we can squeeze in a hall, right? All right, how much are we taking? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. If they, if they go land intrepid adversary, we die. Nice. But let's go for dragon and try to kill him. Okay. Okay. No problem. No problem unless they remi remember to kill my dragon. Nice? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you nice. Well, they didn't attack well. They attacked wrong. So we get, a, we get to give them the treatment now. If they had held back a spirit and my dragon dies, then maybe I don't kill them with this chain of epiphanies. But since they did it that way, they definitely die here. All right. The only question is how much epiphany do we do? Let's get the hall down, I suppose. We can do this or we can do this. The dragon's fire can clear the spellbinder there at 12. Dead, right? They're dead. All right. Get out. Exterminate you from the ladder. Get out. <laughs> Big diamond. I'm gonna gonna keep him out of mythic. All right. Uh, on the play, I can try this hand. I'm nervous though. I guess I hang on to the smashing. Do I? I do. Ooh, if we put a stop here, it might be a good bluff. See, now they think we have a spike field hazard, which maybe makes them afraid to play their Lotus Cobra. I'm just making... I'm, You know, most, most people on ladder do not care, right? They really do not care, so... But me? I, I, I guess that's why we get, we get so many W's. Because we put in that little, little extra. I like the Prismari command here if they activate the Ranger class to try to play around a counterspell. So, their turn was activate Ranger class. That's a big tempo swing for us. We could zap this in and cast the Deluge while they have kind of an empty board, but I think the iteration's better. Hand. Library Exile. Play this. We got these sweet, sweet Shatter Skull Smashings to smash things if we need to. I know, that was a great sentence. I know you're impressed. Don't act like you're not. Baseless Haven. Hmm? Hmm. Another Ranger class. That's kind of a tough one, right? I guess we can rebuke the wolf. So no big deal.
Can also zap it with the smashing. But let's get the egg on the field. That's a really good draw because it starts kind of this ticking time bomb type of effect. Hmm. Could have zapped that in to hold up Saw It coming. Probably should have. What was I thinking? I was thinking I like losing to Chariot. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Um, smash both of these doesn't... It does flip the dragon. Is that the right play? I haven't made the right play most of this game. <laughs> How about divide by zero the chariot, and then they have to play it again? When they attack with these, though, they make them 4-4s. Four That's a big problem. I just really wish I could defend this. What happens if we just kill one cat? Hmm? Then we still have Saw coming, divide by zero, open. I like it. I like it a lot. They do need another creature or to activate their haven. They need to commit mana, basically, to power up the chariot. And that plays into Saw It Coming or Divide by Zero. Ren and countered. Did they level both of these? Level two, level two. If they attack, do I have to block? They could have a blizzard brawl. No attacks, okay. Probably don't have a blizzard brawl then. Interesting. That's pretty good draw. That's a pretty good draw. 20 to 20. Let's swing. So we could hold on to the Deluge, but if we play it here, we might be able to go get an untapped land and a spell. But I think it's better to hold the Divide by Zero up. If these both survive and we ping the face twice, the game's over. Inscription. No kicker. So what's the plan? They're going to power up the chariot? Sure. We could have killed it with the dragon, but I think we'll find lethal, because I think I can see what their plan is, and it's not going to work very well. Let them have this, make a cat attack. Sure. All this is fine. We just need to keep our dragons alive. If we do that, we can win. That's what I was waiting for. Opponent could still have another fight spell here. Hmm. Or not. Lethal mascots. Pew pew. All right, opponents on the play. We have the Fading Hope, Smoldering Egg, Expressive Iteration Curve. Good stuff. We've got good stuff. 
The champ is here. I'm ready to bounce it. If it's just a 1-1, though, I don't care very much yet. Warlock class. Okay. Let's hold. So, beginning of your end step, if a creature died, each, or, yeah, if a creature died, each opponent loses one life. Sure. Now they dig. Let's see more of what they got cooking. Black decks didn't really show up at the World Championship. The closest was the Grixis deck, which was just a little splash of black. All right, let's dig. Spike field hazard, huh? Interesting choice. But I think we'll bounce the champ and then hazard it later. Also sets us up to flip this dragon. If they had another zombie, they would have played it. I have no idea if I should keep this. But if it's close, I probably should. Right now our dragon has no protection. If the opponent just leaves up two mana, the Jwari can catch him. Deluge can flip the dragon, but Spikefield Hazard can exile the champ. Probably a Deluge turn, but let's wait. I think our opponent might also have a removal spell for this. Let's see what they do here on five mana. Let's take it slow. We're not taking that much damage. There's no reason to panic. They go for Lolth. So, if we flip the dragon with the Deluge... The opponent will have two spiders. Spikefield Hazard kills both. Then we can attack the dragon. Pretty good. I will show you what happens when the spy I will get what I want. Gold span. Kill the Reachers. Subservience will be rewarded. Kill the Wolf. Let's see if the opponent can deal with this board now. Attacks. Deadly Dispute. Okay. Makes treasure, draws cards. They don't have Snowland, so probably not a blood on the snow deck unless they really oopsied on the build. I've done that before. Is that a full... Yeah. The Meat Hook Massacre gets around the Jawari because it never targeted the dragon. Okay.
One land untapped can defend the dragon with divide by zero. I... Grr. Nobody saw that, right? I thought I clicked on attack, but missed. All right. Uh, need to buy a new mouse. This mouse is going in the trash. It's the mouse's fault. Son of a... <laughs> Punished. Punished. It's fine. It's just making the content more interesting. What is the champion of the parish doing? There must be a lot more zombies we're not seeing. Opponent doing it all. Trying to hold this divide by zero. Trying to wait for the perfect moment. They grabbed fumes. Opponent probably feels good. We're at 10, but this is close. Infernal Grasp. If they go for it again... Or we could bounce the egg. Uh, we would need them to go for it again and sacrifice their treasure, which I don't think they're going to do. Let's see if they power up that hive. Try to get aggressive. Take a chunk out of me. One or more other creatures die, you draw a card? Ugh. Well, if they do power up the hive here, that's pretty good. Nope, they're going to level 2 this warlock class. Let me read these again. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, each opponent loses one life. We really want to save the dragon's fire for the hive. If the opponent plays another creature here, we can smash them. Okay, so they'll get a zombie that's worth four damage. Whenever one or more other creatures die, draw a card. So we're on the end step now, right? So I'm playing around this trigger. So I can use the Deluge to try to find another solution or I can shatter these. I go down to seven from that play. The Hive can power up and attack me down to four. Oof. Oof. Or I can try to find another removal spell here with the Deluge. Say go to my opponent. We block here. We take one, two, three, four. This dies. One, two, three. Go to two. Or we try to catch our opponent casting the fumes.
All right, we need a good like two mana spell. This is just safer, right? May as well put all the mana into it to put the mana into the egg. I've made most of the mistakes I've made playing this deck has been because I've tried to memory deluge into like what I need to deal with the board when I have something that can deal with it even awkwardly in my hand. Okay, they leveled the Warlock class. We don't have enough mana here to cast an Allrun's Epiphany if we find it. So this doubles the damage I took. So if they attack me with the Hive, I just... I'm not quite dead, right? I think we want a Deluge to try to hit more spells because it can trigger the Dragon more. I think now's the time to deluge here. Rebuke, smash, haul. None of these are going to help us against the hive, but we could put out a second blocker. Meat hook for four. Ouch. But with no creatures on the board, it will gain them life, but it doesn't cost me. Like, this warlock class is nasty, but it doesn't hurt me this turn. That is a problem. Okay. The beginning of your end step, each opponent loses life equal to the life they lost this turn. So we have to kill this. Wait, what? Equal to the life they lost this turn. If a creature died this turn. Okay, my dragons died. Understood. It's just not there. It's not there. Ugh! That game felt really bad. Diamond one, final boss. We get your big diamond. We take it from you if we win. I will keep it. And let's see what happens. Let's uh, kick it off with a tapped hammer pass. The final boss could only be mono white. Zap. No play. Turn three is gonna get feisty here. You can bet elite elite spellbinders coming. Paulo, is that you, Paulo? It sure is. Let's let them choose. Yep, deluge. Ha ha! Now it goes for six. So we could have untapped and smashed it, because it's only a one toughness creature. Thought about it, but let's chill. Let's chill. We're making our way to Deluge here. As long as we kill everything every turn, they're going to have trouble. Wait a minute. When I pump this up to a three, it costs more. 
So that's a sn that's a crafty play, and maybe I should have just smashed the Apollo, because they found the card I can't smash. So what's their follow up? Apparition. Okay. Usher. Okay. This is gonna hurt a lot. But I guess we're going to Deluge. We've been pretty unlucky with just drawing the Deluges, but I definitely sequenced in a way that didn't play around Redain or respect it, so I deserve a little punishment. This is a lot of punishment. This is so much punishment. We are dead. I think. We're gonna have to find cheap spells that kill creatures, because remember, we don't sweep. We don't sweep. Fading Hope. Prismari Command. Thundering Rebuke. Pretty good things. Let's clear this first. Now we can kill both of these. The opponent can attack us for six. Or we can Prismari Command and Fading Hope the Faceless Haven. It's pretty good. Okay. I think I know what I like. That Faceless Haven is going to be a problem. Eggy? Egg probably gets removed by our opponent. But we can play egg and smash, right? Smash both of these and have an egg on the field. Might make the opponent's turn tricky. Wow. Okay. Okay. Hopefully that leaves them in a bit of a bind against the egg. Now if we play egg and smash, though, they still have... They get to keep a creature. I think we're better off with egg deluge, but they could kill us. They could remove the smoldering egg and play a sky mall. We've seen this nonsense before. All right, no pressure on the field, but they can play Haven and a creature and be right back in the driver's seat. It's very scary. Cute little one drop, huh? Ooh. Rough. All right, I'm gonna do this. I don't expect to flip the egg, so playing it first, I'd rather hit a removal spell, and we do. Power up Haven. Enter combat. Kill Haven. Come on, baby. Down to three. And a Sun Gold Sentinel. That is an annoying card that can get through the All Run Birdos if. Well, I mean, right now they have Coven. They have Hidden Coven because they can activate the Usher in combat, then activate the Sentinel. So we need to draw a solution to the Sentinel. Here's our reroll. 
The fourth memory deluge. I think we have to go for this memory deluge. Otherwise, we're just going to die to the Sentinel. Divide by zero is a solution for now. And we have to do it now, because if the opponent untaps, they attack... Wait, hold on. They have to attack, then they have to activate the Usher, then they have to activate the Sungul Sentinel. In response, we could divide it by zero. But all they need is an untapped land, and we lose. But the upside of that play is we get to kill the Usher. It's not worth it. Usher is not getting through right now anyway. It's not worth it. Let's gain a little life. Get off this three. This nasty number three. They have a Fateful Absence. That gives us a clue. They have another one? And they attack. They get us to one. Oh my goodness. Sungold Sentinel? Yes. One Deluge gone. Off the top, it's another iteration. So now we're dead again in the same situation. So we have to dig up the removal that we need. Divide by zero again. <laughs> but we still have to get off this... We have to get off this uh, position. I guess an egg can try to block the usher, but it's dead to a top deck removal. For the same reasons as last turn, I think we have to do this. And we have to... I guess Max Scott Exhibition is... Is it difficult for this to get through? It takes a lot of mana. If I was going to play the egg, I should have played the egg first. That was a mistake. The other option is to loot the hand and try to hit a removal spell. I can't believe I'm doing that. Might pay off. All right, we already played our land for turn. So casting this, casting this and this is the same, except this dies to a pump spell and this dies to a removal spell. This is the higher upside play because we can flip it with the epiphany. So we're going to go for it. We need a top deck land to epiphany now. Good lord. Opponent's really good. Really good at magic in this game. They're making this very difficult. Oh, that'll do. That'll do. Hold on. Uh, let's go get another land. Oh, baby. You, I hope you feel that. Ba boom! Get that heart moving. That diamond is mine. And we are back for the post game wrap up. And let's check out the stats powered by Untapped.gg. We've got some nice ones for you here today. A 69% win rate, 88% on the play, 50% on the draw. No surprise there in a very aggressive leaning field and a deck without sweepers to struggle on the draw much more than on the play. And uh, eight games against Mono White. About eight games against everything else, and uh, everything else felt, you know, 
really winnable mono white felt like did they go first did they curve of course they won so i think the biggest change i would make if i were trying to ladder with this deck since it's kind of a one deck format on ladder much like mono red was back when people didn't want to craft cards and just wanted to get to mythic i would play for cinderclasm and i would show mono white exactly what they can do with their wide boards and nonsense curves uh, so i would cut two thundering rebukes i would cut the dissipate and the saw it coming this is specifically talking about the ladder climb to mythic where right now mono white is the format i would cut those things and i would play four copies of cinderclasm and i would just roll decks that want to get six creatures in play on turn three it would be awesome. And otherwise, the deck is 100% competitive and ready to battle with anybody who wants to rumble with it. And I think that you can have a lot of fun and definitely get to Mythic with the deck. It is a lovely one. Brah. Brah. What, why, did, why is that there? Why is this over here? Oh, yeah, I put it there. Anyway, thank you very much. And congratulations to Yuta Takahashi for a very emotional and wonderful viewing experience watching the Magic the Gathering World Championships. He is your world champion. Is it Dragons brought it home? Goldspan got it on. Card's still good. So, uh, and lastly, of course, remember to like and subscribe. And thank you for watching the video. As always, I'll see you in the next one. You're cool.